And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. As time goes by, I'm going to go back and look at older games that I've reviewed before, but games that I think are worthy of a, a video review. And so you'll see me on, an, on occasion go back and review a game again, and if I do, almost count on it as a good game, because if it's not, I've gotten rid of it by then. But today's game is David and Goliath. Now, as someone who loves, loves telling this story to children, telling this amazing Bible story to kids, I was very eager to play the game, which kind of kind of has the theme of Dave and Goliath, but it's basically a trick-taking game. Now, there are people out there who will tell you that Teach You is the greatest trick-taking game ever, and there are people out there who love hearts and they love spades, and I'm not opposed to any of those games. They're all fine. But Dave and Goliath, my friends, is a wonderful trick-taking game because it works with three, it works with four, it works with five, and it works with six. It works in all those situations, and it is just amazingly fun. A unique scoring system and a lot of thought behind how you play, but at the same time, get you can relax while you're playing, throw cards out, and just have a good time. David and Glide is made up of several suits of colors. You can see red, yellow, purple, blue, and green. Five different colors, and each of those colors goes from 1 to 18. Now, you're not going to use every number in a game with less than six players. If you play with six players, you go all the way up to 18. If you play with less than that, you will take out a certain amount of cards so that they're even. But basically, you're going to deal out the entire deck to all the players. One person goes first, and they play any card of any color. So let's say, for example, they play red. Anybody who has a red card, you have to follow the suit that's led. But if you don't have the suit that's led, you can play anything you want. So let's say these are the cards that were played in this trick. Okay? So, we look. Number two is the smallest number on the board. This is David. David kills Goliath. He takes the highest number, which is a 17. Once a card is played on the table, the color does not matter, um, at least for purposes of scoring. So the highest number versus lowest number, you have to follow suit, but once you play the card on the table, it does not matter. There's no trump suit or anything. So David wins Goliath. So the person with David puts this card in front of him. Then the player who plays Goliath gets the rest. So he would get all those cards. And then the player who played Goliath leads off in the next trick. So let's say he plays a yellow 12, and then someone plays a yellow 1, and then someone plays a yellow, uh, a yellow 11, then someone plays a blue 1, and someone plays a red 15. Now, we have two number 1s here, so the second one played would be David. He would take Goliath, so this person would get the 15, and then the 15 would get the rest of the cards. Now, what's the point of this game? See, whenever you collect cards, you're putting them in front of you. When you have one card of a color, it's worth the number on that card. So this is worth 15 points. That's great. That's worth 8 points. Now you have 23 points. But once you have three cards of a color, now they're worth only one point each. So now that went from being worth 23 points to being worth three. So if you take more, you only want to take one or two of each color. If you take a third, well then you might as well take as many as you can of that color. And also if you're going to take a few cards of each color, you prefer them to be high numbers and not take a one. Uh, but as you can see, usually playing David is more powerful in this game because you get the highest card and that's all you get. But sometimes playing Goliath can be useful because you can get a whole bunch of different colors. But it's really great fun when you can make someone take that third card because they lose a lot of points. At the end of a round, you add up points. For example, here I get one point for blue, three points for yellow, 17 points for green, and four points for red. We add those up, you play to a certain score, or you play till everyone has led once uh, through the deck, and it's just amazingly fun. So that's it, Vassal, you might ask? You mean, seriously, it's, it, that's all there is to it? Yes, but see, this is one of those times where simplicity is a good thing. I mean, I love the fact that the colors matter, but there's no Trump suit. You don't have to remind someone, oh, don't forget, red is Trump. No, you just play a card, but high numbers get all the cards, except one or the lowest number gets that high card. And so knowing when to play your David, getting that smallest number on there, and when to play the highest, or trying to force somebody to play a certain card uh, when you can. And it, it just works out so well. With three players, that middle player often has a pretty interesting uh, dilemma because they see the card the first person put down so they can go lower or higher 
and then they're curious on how the final person would go. With five or six, it seems like the game might be more chaotic, but I'm telling you, even with six players, I felt a decent amount of control, and a skilled player will do very well at the game. However, the game isn't all skill. I don't think you're going to be finding professional David and Goliath players out there, and maybe that's why I like it so much, because once people get super skilled at the game, they often tend to become a little bit uh, irrit irritating to talk to about it. David and Goliath is a light family game. It has a theme which most people will enjoy, especially when you put all the numbers together and flip through. You'll see David growing up into Goliath. Are David and Goliath the same person? Oh, no, anyway. So, it's a fun, fast, trick-taking game. One, I think, should be in every collection. Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio, and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.